everybody. So, I just received this package. It's from Gamelin Games, and uh, I'm really excited because this is the Kickstarter, um, one of my most anticipated Kickstarters I've been waiting for. Um, it, it might sound a little bit awkward right now because uh, I'm actually recording the audio for this after I recorded video because... Well, that's the way things are. The audio that recorded on my phone was not that great, but I wanted to get this make a make my first attempt at an unboxing video. So as you can see here, I am opening up the Kickstarter for Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea from Gameland Games. Um, it's just I was really excited for this. So you know, just taking a look at the packages here. I mean, it just comes with so much stuff. So we got the Nomads expansion. We have the uh, Mercenaries expansion. There's two of them. Uh, one comes with two little uh, miniatures, and the other comes with four. Now these are, as far as I know, Kickstarter exclusives. I don't, or at least some of the figures are. I don't know if they're going to come out later. Um, but, you know, we'll take a look at the miniatures uh, a little bit later in the video. And this is the uh, catapult, the ballista, you know, some uh, siege engines, uh, just a little, another mini expansion that adds to the game. And I believe that was definitely a Kickstarter exclusive. I don't think you can get that anywhere else. And then we have these massive boxes. Uh, I don't think I own any other board game that um, came in this size. It doesn't even fit on Kalex shelves for the people who like those IKEA shelves, uh, which, you know, I am one of them. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even get it out of the package here. Had to uh, get a little bit uh, more creative with uh, how I was going to open it. Um, and don't worry, I didn't cut the package. You know, anybody who cares about that kind of thing. Uh, but this is the main box um, down there below, um, and the ex the five to six player expansion, which came with more races, and uh, honestly, the more interesting races. The main game, you know, just comes with the typical stuff you see in a fantasy game, like the humans, the orcs, the, um, you know, elves, stuff like that, uh, dwarves. The uh, Chaos and Order expansion, or Order and Chaos expansion, uh, that one came with some really interesting factions. Um, but we just look at here. I mean, you can see here, these boxes are massive. So Galen Games is known for their tiny epic series. Um, you know, the really, really small games you can fit in your pocket, you know, but they are, you know, real full-fledged games, just smaller footprint, basically. Uh, these games are the complete opposite. I guess... You know, I don't know if Gamelin Games decided that they were sick of people making jokes about their tiny epic line, or what the case may be, and they said, you know what, fine, you want a big game? We're going, we're going to go to town on this, and we're going to have a gigantic game. So it, the, they could have just called this the epic game. I mean, it's gigantic. Um, but we're opening up this here, and I mean, the box quality, you could just feel it through the plastic here. It's, it's a really good quality product, which I'm just used to with Gamelin Games. I've purchased multiple um, copies of their products. I always enjoy, you know, the games that I get from them, and uh, I'm never disappointed by just the sheer quality uh, that you receive. And uh, opening this up, we got, uh, you know, all the stuff that comes with the base game, the stuff that you need for a four-player game with just the regular factions. Um, these are, those are the... Uh, stands for the airships because you know it's called heroes of land air and sea so you know you're gonna get all those things um this is the you know guide to the different you know the keys to the different exploration tokens because this is a 4x game um that's for explore exploit exterminate and um i always never remember all four it's written on the side of the box so i'm sure i'll see it later in this video um, and this is the first piece of the map. So in the base game, it comes with um, part of the uh, map that you're going to be playing on so that you have four islands, so you have four players. In the expansion, it comes with an extra piece of the map that you can slide over and attach it to, kind of like Scythe. Um, it, you put them together so that you can have up to six players. And these are the player boards. We have the elves, we have the humans, um, and we have the orcs, and we have the dwarves in this set, as I said. And uh, on the opposite, on the opposite side, the um, 
uh, of the player boards, it's interesting because you can have, if you wanted to play this game one player, on the opposite side there is a way to do an automatic player system so that they will respond, you know, back to you in, you know, designated actions. So you could try to, you know, play by yourself in this game. And uh, here we have all the punch boards. Uh, beautiful artwork on everything. I mean, as I'm going through this, I'm just blown away at the quality here. Uh, the punch boards aren't as thick as the other stuff, so I'm wondering how the constructs are going to work together. But then we get to the piece de resistance, which is these miniatures. I don't believe in any of the Tiny Epic games. Certainly none of the ones that I own have they done miniatures before. So I don't know if people were skeptical or not. I sure wasn't because it's just I'm used to the quality that Game Wind puts out, like I said. But these sculpts are gorgeous. Um, the top ones here are the humans and the uh, orcs, I believe. Uh, but we take a look at them. And like I said, it's just amazing sculpts. Like the detail is fantastic. You know, this is the one of the human heroes, and I mean, it's just really nice what you get on this thing. Um, just, it, it's definitely not a cheap looking miniature. The plastic quality is really good. As I'm handling these things, I'm like, I, I don't think I could break these if I tried. Um, nothing looks super droopy. Nothing, you know, looks bad. Um, and just gorgeous details, like tiny little stuff. And you can't even see it in these videos, but when you look at, when you hold these in your hand, you're going to feel like all the little sculpted details that they put on there. And just little little things that you you wouldn't think are necessary, but they're there and they just add, just add so much personality to the sculpts. And then uh, once we get over here, we can take a look at the elves and the uh, dwarves. Lots of tape. Always tape. <laughs> it's, you think you get it all and there's always one more piece of tape. Um, the elves, very light, very, um, you know, almost what you would think is typical, but it's still gorgeous sculpting. I mean, there, there's nothing that super stands out. Like, the to me, the elves and the dwarves were, oh, those guys popped out. Uh, the elves and the dwarves were the least interesting to me. I mean, I know a lot of people really like dwarves, and I'm sure they like elves too. Um, but I wasn't looking forward to these factions as much. But that doesn't take away. Like, this guy's really cool. I mean, he looks like a pirate dwarf, basically. And, you know, they could have made, you know, the sword, like, on his back or whatever. I don't know. It's easier to mold. But, I mean, the way it sticks out like that, it just looks cool. And then uh, this guy is just awesome looking. I mean, a rocket-powered hammer, essentially. That's what it, the impression I get. I think that's an explosion. Um, I mean, they scream for paint. I, I didn't opt for the painted version of the game, which I think they only paint the heroes anyway when you did that. Because I figured, hey, if anybody's going to paint it and, or not, not paint everything, it's going to be me. Because uh, so far, every game I've tried to paint, I haven't finished yet. But yeah, that's the dwarves, the elves, the humans. Um, and now we have the Order and Chaos expansion. This is what I was looking forward to most because these factions, to me, are the most interesting. Um, these are ones that you don't often see in a game like this, in this theme. So, you know, going into it, I was just really excited. But as you can see here, the picture on the back of the box, they have that, you know, extra board on there that just makes it gigantic. Uh, I don't even know if my table's going to be able to handle this entire game. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm going to try. <laughs> um, I don't think I would play this with six players. I don't know how quickly it's going to go. But uh, the gameplay itself, uh, I've always, like, I'm attracted to the bling in these games, but it's, you know, when it, with Zombie Side, with Ghostbusters, with, um, you know, Doom, all those games that we've reviewed on the podcast, I'm just, you know, they look cool. I'm really excited for miniatures. But once I start playing them, they're not that interesting of a game. I mean, it's just moving and rolling dice to, you know, for combat. So I, t I was very hesitant to actually back this game until I, you know, really watched a few playthroughs of how the game works. Um, I wanted to make sure that this was more of a mechanically gr driven, you know, s strategic game. And it absolutely is. Um, it uses a couple of things from, you know, past games from Scott Elms, like the follow mechanic and stuff like that, which got me really excited because I love that kind of thing. 
Um, the, you know, here we have the, that's the extension board that goes on it and, you know, brings out the, so you can have up to six players. And then we have the player boards for the new factions. You have the undead, you have the lizard men, you have the uh, goblins and the lion kin. The undead and the lion kin are the ones I was looking most forward to because, I mean, lion kin, that's just cool. Uh, I like the idea of, I, you know, I always liked lions. Uh, my, oh, my favorite transformer is Steeljaw. He happens to be a lion. Uh, so, you know, it's just really exciting to see that happen. Um, and the undead, the sculpts on it looked amazing, as you'll see in a minute. And uh, so I was excited for those. And then here are the constructs for those extra factions. Um, you know, obviously I'll put those together at some point and maybe I'll make a video about those being put together. I don't know. Uh, it depends on the response to this video, honestly. The, you know, the artwork, just like in the base game, is gorgeous here. And it makes me excited to see these put together. Uh, and a lot of thought put into it. Like, I was really excited for the Goblin stuff because, you know, they have like this steampunk, you know, futuristic feel. Like, they got a little bit of technology, which is really cool. Reminds me of one of my all-time favorite uh, computer games, which was Warcraft 2. Um, you know, the goblins had their grenade guys, and they had the blimps, and they had all that extra stuff that you wouldn't think would be in a fantasy realm, but it just adds that extra element of coolness to it. Um, so here we have the first two uh, factions, the undead, like I said, and the Lion King, who those two are the ones I was looking forward to the most. And looking at here, yep, more tape. And looking at these guys, it's just... It's hard to see, especially with the white sculpt, white plastic for the undead, but the sculpting detail is just tremendous. Um, you know, his, you can see like he's all emaciated. He's just a skeletal king, basically. You know, think Lord of the Rings, the ring wraiths here. Um, and then we get into, you know, some of the other ones where it's just, they're like creepy looking. You got your Grim Reaper looking guy, um, and just the skeletal remains of warriors from the past. Um, these guys are really interesting. I mean, I think they're the the serfs or the you know the the servant class guys because they have the bag of stuff that they're carrying. But just really neat detail. Like they could have gone so generic with it, but they added a lot of extra details. The lion can. I don't know if you can see the detail in this video because this bright yellow plastic makes it a little difficult um but you know when you hold them in your hand you can definitely tell all like the fur and the sculpting and the muscles that they put on them um they just look majestic they look so good i mean this guy with the flowing cape and everything it's this bright yellow plastic it doesn't really show up very well on my camera unfortunately but i assure you they look amazing um maybe this one will look a little bit better um i think he's the leader guy uh he's at least one of the heroes but, uh, yeah, I mean, just, they look so cool. And from what I've read so far of their powers, they're really cool. And we have the lizard folk and the goblins. Now, these two, I, I don't know, I wasn't looking as forward to that faction. Because the neat thing is you pick your pa faction and you just, you know, play to the strengths. Everybody, they're slightly asymmetrical. They have, you know, different powers and strengths and weaknesses for the different factions. So hopefully nobody picks mine that I really like. Uh, but, you know, the goblins, though, when you look at them, they have a lot of personality. Like this, the Goblin King, I mean, he looks like the Goblin King from The Hobbit, only a lot smaller. Um, and then you get into uh, this one over here, which is probably my favorite. And like I said about goblins from, like, Warcraft with the extra technology, this dude's got a rocket pack. I mean, how awesome is that? And they're so tiny. Like, this is what's neat about it. They differentiate themselves from the orcs. Um, they are a different style. Of, are those spurs on his feet? Yeah, they are. Okay, he's got roller skates. Um, he's got a rocket-powered roller skate uh, setup going on. Uh, but these guys are so tiny and lithe, and they look almost, you know, fragile. But there's, they got to be, like, numerous. So, you know, you could get some strength in numbers with them. And because they got their technology to compensate for that, like, the stories going on in my head just going through this box, are, are they're already there. Uh, but really cool stuff here. Um, and then we have the lizard guys. Now, these, I, like, probably my least anticipated of this expansion box, but the sculpts are gorgeous. I mean... Makes me want to try them, too. I don't know what their special power is. I didn't even read into them because they didn't interest me at first, like I said. 
but honestly like looking at these like there's some cool stuff here i mean this one here with the bow and arrow i mean she looks like a like a ninja lizard person <laughs> you know so maybe she's a uh, Maybe she's related to uh, the, um, what, what's that race from Doctor Who? The Silurians, you know, what, whatever it is. I guess I can get behind it if I think of them as Silurians. Um, you know, ancient race of lizard folk. And then you got these guys here. I mean, I guess the, the servant class are going to be the smaller, skinnier ones, but I don't expect them to be warriors. I think that's a, it looks like he's holding a hammer, so I guess he's servant class. And then we get into the extra stuff that comes with it. So this is the Nomads expansion, which adds a little bit to the game. And there's a couple different ways you can play it, from what I understand. I mean, you can just have the Nomads on the board, and they're kind of a nuisance, and you got to, you know, kill them to explore more territories and get them out of the way. Uh, or you can recruit them as part of the mercenary style, where you can actually get several of the Nomads and have them be part of your, your faction. And they can work for you and, you know, just be an annoyance to everybody else instead of you. And the sculpts on these are really cool. Um, my youngest daughter, when she saw them, she thought they were trolls, um, which I guess they are. I, I'm not sure. But, you know, they look like, a, you know, a Neanderthalic person, you know, from way, way back in the day, like an ancient race before, you know, the current race has taken over. Um, so a really cool idea behind it, and it just adds an extra element to the game that I'm, I don't think I will play without once I try it, because it looked like a lot of fun. And it came with its rule sheet, you know, how to use them in the different ways, and some cool artwork. Like I've mentioned before, the artwork on everything, you know, is just gorgeous looking. I like how everything fits the theme. And my apologies, I didn't check who the artist was before I started recording this. Uh, but they did a wonderful job, um, whoever they are. Um, you know, Game and Games, all their stuff has always had great art. So I'm really excited for that. And then we have the Mercenary Pack Expansion number one. Now this one is interesting because one of the mercenaries that you can get... Um, I don't know if anyone has said this before, and I don't agree if they have. But one of them is... Gamelin himself, the mascot of Gamelin Games. And now, this company has put out so many good quality products, they deserve this, honestly, to put Gamelin in this game. Um, his sculpt, a little bend in his sword, but other than that, um, you know, the sculpt is gorgeous, the armor, everything's plated, and, you know, it just looks cool, and he's just begging for paint, um, which, you know, like I said, I will hopefully do. Uh, but there's so many miniatures in this box, I don't know when I'm going to get to them all. Uh, but yeah, they they deserve to be able to put this in this game. I mean, it might seem self-serving, but I, do, I don't believe that is true. I don't know if anyone said it yet, and uh, they shouldn't if they do, honestly. Gamelin Games, you deserve to put your own mascot in this game. You guys have done such a wonderful job. Uh, this is the... I honestly don't know his name. I think it was Jowls, um, but a uh, really cool sculpt. He looks like a minotaur, and he's got really neat, uh, you know, high-quality plastic, just like everybody else, and I love that Macy carries. Now, this is not a copyright infringing tree person from uh, Tolkien novels, um, but he's a tree person. Um, I forgot what his name was, but it's, you know, it's definitely not who you think it is. <laughs> but cool sculpt. I, I remember there was some controversy with his naming um, during the Kickstarter. And then this guy, I picked him up. He is heavy honestly, like just really heavy, um, probably the heaviest mold that uh, I picked up so far, like I could probably chuck him against the wall, I'm not going to, and he probably wouldn't break though, um, cool sculpt, I, I'm really excited to play with the mercenaries, because they just add a lot to the game from what I understand, oh that's his name, it's Bachula, uh, that's pretty cool, um, I don't remember what the original name was that caused all the problems, but that's beside the point, and then we have the Mercenary Expansion Pack number two. This one only comes with two mercenaries. Not sure why. I think these guys might have been Kickstarter exclusive, so you won't be able to get them later. Um, the other pack might be available you know, for purchase through cons or whatever. Um, the first one we have here is uh, this devil-looking guy um, with huge wings and a pitchfork and just a really cool sculpt overall. Um, he just looks mean so uh, i'll be excited to recruit him um see what he can do 
but uh, you know, just all these things are gorgeous sculpts and begging for paint. I mean, I don't know when I'm gonna get to it, but uh, I, I just like like the idea of you know painting the miniatures and stuff like that. Even if I don't like the game, I still paint the miniatures for them. I just I'm a very slow painter. Now this is going off my reason why I kind of started to dig the goblins is this whole steampunk aspect of it. This is Mechmaster Sid. He was another Kickstarter exclusive, like you know stretch goal that was unlocked. Um, just I mean look at that. They molded his legs. Like they didn't have to do that. Like they could have cheap cheapened out and just put like a cover over his legs so it looked like he was part of the machine or something. But no, they molded him into the chair. Uh, which is really neat. Really fun, fun stuff that they've put in here. And then we have the um, the siege engines and stuff like that that I talked about earlier. And yeah, I mean, I'm excited to play this game. Looking at it, uh, here was a Land Air and Sea um, from Gameland Games and Scott Alms. Scott Alms has knocked most of the games I played out of the park, and even the ones I the one I didn't like. It was still a very good game. It's just it didn't sit well with people. Uh, but I, I have no disappointments. I, I can say that. I mean, this game is incredible. And I honestly cannot wait to get it to the table. Uh, but thank you so much for watching this video for the people who did. And yeah, we're going to have a good time with this. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff that all the other YouTubers say. Check us our podcast out, uh, Board with Friends, on the on all the Nerdy Fun Network. Thanks for watching.